Today's reading begins in Judges, chapter 1, starting in verse 1. After the death of Joshua, the children of Israel asked of the Lord, saying, Who should go up for us first against the Canaanites, to fight against them? The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Judah said to Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go up with you into your lot. So Simeon went with him. Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. They struck ten thousand men in Bezek. They found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him. They struck the Canaanites and the Perizzites, but Adonai Bezek fled. They pursued him, caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings, having their thumbs and their big toes cut off, scavenged under my table. As I have done, so God has done to me. They brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. The children of Judah fought against Jerusalem, took it, struck it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. After that, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites who lived in the hill country, and in the south, and in the lowland. Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. The name of Hebron before that was Kiriath Arba. They struck Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai. From there he went against the inhabitants of Debir. The name of Debir before that was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, I will give Aksa my daughter as wife to the man who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, so he gave him Aksa his brother as his wife. When she came, she got him to ask her father for a field. She got off her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What would you like? She said to him, Give me a blessing, because you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also springs of water. Then Caleb gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. The children of the Kenite, Moses' brother-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which is in the south of Arad, and they went and lived with the people. Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they struck the Canaanites who inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it. The name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Gaza with its border, and Ashkelon with its border, and Ekron with its border. The Lord was with Judah, and drove out the inhabitants of the hill country, for he could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. They gave Hebron to Caleb, as Moses had said, and he drove the three sons of Anak out of there. The children of Benjamin didn't drive out the Jebusites who inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this day. The house of Joseph also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. The house of Joseph sent to spy out Bethel. The name of the city before that was Luz. The watchers saw a man come out of the city, and they said to him, Please show us the entrance into the city, and we will deal kindly with you. He showed them the entrance into the city, and they struck the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the man and all his family go. The man went into the land of the Hittites, built a city, and called its name Luz, which is its name to this day. Manasseh didn't drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and its towns, nor Tanakh and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblim and its towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. When Israel had grown strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, and didn't utterly drive them out. Ephraim didn't drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer, but the Canaanites lived in Gezer amongst them. Zebulun didn't drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalal, but the Canaanites lived amongst them, and became subject to forced labor. Asher didn't drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Sidon, nor of Alab, nor of Axib, nor of Helba, nor of Aphek, nor of Rehob. But the Asherites lived amongst the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they didn't drive them out. Naphtali didn't drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath, but he lived amongst the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became subject to forced labor. The Amorites forced the children of Dan into the hill country, for they would not allow them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres, in Aijalon, and in Shalbim. Yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became subject to forced labor. The border of the Amorites was from the ascent of Akrabim, from the rock, and upward. The Lord's angel came up from Gilgal to Bochem, he said, I brought you out of Egypt, and have brought you to the land which I swore to give your fathers. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. 
You shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall break down their altars, but you have not listened to my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be in your sides, and their gods will be a snare to you. When the Lord's angel spoke these words to all the children of Israel, the people lifted up their voice and wept. They called the name of that place Bochem, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. Now when Joshua had sent the people away, the children of Israel each went to his inheritance to possess the land. The people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great work of the Lord that he had worked for Israel. Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being one hundred and ten years old. They buried him in the border of his inheritance, in timnath Herez, in the hill country of Ephraim, on the north of the mountain of Gosh. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, starting in verse 29. He, that is Jesus, told them a parable. See the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see it and know by your own selves that the summer is already near. Even so, you also, when you see these things happening, know that God's kingdom is near. Most certainly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things are accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So be careful, or your hearts will be loaded down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day will come on you suddenly, for it will come like a snare on all those who dwell on the surface of the earth. Therefore be watchful all the time, praying that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will happen, and to stand before the Son of Man." Every day Jesus was teaching in the temple, and every night he would go out and spend the night on the mountain that is called Olivet. All the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might put him to death, for they feared the people. Satan entered into Judas, who was also called Iscariot, who was counted with the twelve. He went away and talked with the chief priests and captains about how he might deliver him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. He consented and sought an opportunity to deliver him to them in the absence of the multitude. The day of unleavened bread came, on which the Passover must be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters. Tell the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large, furnished upper room. Make preparations there. They went, found things as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover. Psalm 90 Beginning in verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations, before the mountains were born, before you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction, saying, Return, you children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are just like yesterday when it is past, like a watch in the night. You sweep them away as they sleep. In the morning they sprout like new grass. In the morning it sprouts and springs up. By evening it is withered and dry. For we are consumed in your anger. We are troubled in your wrath. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We bring our years to an end as a sigh. The days of our years are seventy, or even by reason of strength, eighty years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow. For it passes quickly, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, your wrath, according to the fear that is due to you? So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, your glory to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will take refuge. His faithfulness is your shield and rampart. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes, and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he will put his angels in charge of you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, so that you won't dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and cobra, you will trample the young lion and the serpent underfoot. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I will satisfy him with long life, and show him my salvation. Proverbs chapter 13, beginning in verse 24. One who spares the rod hates his son, but one who loves him is careful to discipline him. The righteous one eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked goes hungry. Mm -hmm.